Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, Spanky Guitar YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be doing another review of um, another guitar. Um, my, la my last upload was a review of the uh, Gibson Standard 50s behind me here. And what we are going to do today is have a quick look at the Epiphone version of that guitar, which sits right here. So this one is a 2004 Epiphone Les Paul Standard, I believe. It's a little bit difficult to, to say whether these ones are standards or classics. The ones from the early 2000s and mid 2000s because because these ones have the um, the Gibson truss rod cover here, so it, it doesn't say classic or standard, you know, like the, like the Gibsons do. However, the newer Epiphones, they now distinguish between those, the models. Um, so yeah, this one is a very clean Epiphone Heritage Cherry. Well, actually, just the Cherry Sunburst, I guess it's called, the, um, the newer Gibson behind on the wall is, is a heritage cherry, is what Gibson is calling it. Um, mahogany back. I'm going to be throwing it up on the workbench here behind me and uh, changing the strings and polishing the frets, um, conditioning the fretboard, and I'll open up the cav pick up cavities and you can have a look at the inside of it. Um, maybe we could take a look at the controls. So it has a pretty nice plain top. I, I believe it's just a veneer. I don't think, yeah, the, some Epiphones uh, have what's known as a, a photo photo flame, where they print the print the flame and then they, they uh, roll it on the, the top of the guitar and um, and and apply the polyurethane over it, but. Uh, or they'll use the uh, the small slice of a uh, veneer, which this one does. So I actually had this guitar before before I bought the uh, the Gibson version. It has single ply binding around the body. Two humbuckers, uh, we, I don't remember what's in here, I think 57CH, the Epiphone branded uh, pickups, uh, I forget what this one is, so yeah, um, very clean hardware, chrome hardware, gold knobs, um, binding around the neck, there is no binding on the headstock, but this one also has the older style uh, Epiphone headstock, which, you know, a lot of people don't really care too much for. I don't mind it. I've, I've owned uh, enough Epiphones to uh, to realize that, you know, that, that doesn't bother me at all, as long as the guitar plays nice and, you know, feels good, plays good, sounds good. That's all that matters to me. I was actually hoping that this guitar behind me was going to have a, a, a lighter, a lighter um, shade of cherry or red, similar to this guitar. But this one here is uh, is a little bit darker, a little bit uh, darker shade of, of red or cherry, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but for some reason, I like I like the color of this Epiphone a little, just a tad more. You know, it's not a not a huge difference or anything like that, but oh yeah, and this one has the the Grover tuners, Rotomatic tuners, with the kidney uh, kidney buttons. This one was made in China, DW03. Oh, this was from 2003. Sorry, I thought this was 04. 
the other one, uh, the Ebony, I, I have as an 04. I'll be reviewing that one as well uh, sometime soon. So yeah, I'll turn this on the workbench and let's give me a second. Hello again. Um, so I got the strings taken off. I'm going to be um, um, polishing the frets here shortly. But before I do that, uh, let's have a quick look at the, at the pickups and what drives the Epiphone standard um, in the Cherry Burst. So yeah, uh, these Epiphones, um, like most of us, we start off on Epiphones and maybe someday we'll get a, a Gibson and maybe someday we won't. Some of us aren't, aren't, aren't fortunate enough to get um, Gibsons uh, because of their price. Um, however, um, you know, I was after 40 years of playing guitar well actually 20 years of playing guitar i finally got some gibsons that um you know it's it's taken me a long long time for me to get uh, to get those but um i've always been a fan of these of these epiphones because they really do they really do sound you know they sound good they they have a um value for their money um this one i, I recently just got uh off of my local buy and sell ads and uh, I got this one for 400 Canadian I guess is which is around maybe 300 US or so or 250 maybe something like that 300 which I think is you know it's, it's reasonable it's, it's not expensive nor is it a cheap price but especially for one in this condition the ad said rare you know rarely used when and in this case um it turned out to be right for a guitar that is already 18 years old 2003 its condition was you know fairly it was you know excellent where some sometimes when you get a, a used guitar and they say, "Oh, it's an excellent condition, get very good condition," and you and you go to see it and it's all dirty and crusty strings, and the fret the fretboard is all dirty. So you know, just if it's in that condition, just say, don't say excellent condition or mint. Just say playable guitar if you're not at least going to wipe it down before you give it to your uh, before you sell it but uh anyways that's just my pet peeve of uh used guitars but this one like i said is, is pretty good so inside here I don't think you guys can see that from but I'll just read it here this one is the hotch for the bridge yeah I'm not I'm not even going to lift that up so it says H-O-T-C-H G in brackets LP bridge Epiphone branded And inside it's all painted, uh, you know, it has the shielding, it's very nice rowing. And for the neck, for the neck we have, maybe you can see that one, not sure. 57CH, Epiphone branded, embossed, dot neck bridge, LP neck. I actually like these pickups. Um, they have... They have really good sustain, in my opinion. My my first my first Gibson was a, a Les Paul Studio, 2017 Les Paul Studio. At that time, I had a, a 2006 Black Beauty with the three pickups, and an Epiphone Goth, um, Epiphone Black Beauty, Epiphone Goth that had these 
these pickups and I did a sustain test with the uh, with with the Gibson and the Epiphones that I had before. This was last year and, and these actually sustained longer. And if I remember correctly, there were 16 seconds when you hook click the when you pluck the node at the 12th fret or anywhere there. Uh, the Gibson were only went uh, I think it was nine or ten so, ten seconds and these held out much longer which you know was surprised me and yeah so anyhow I, I, that's not to say every pickup is like that but uh, yeah so I have a I'm very fond of these Epiphone Hotch it's a hot one bridge pickup the 57 ch i think that stands for like classic 57 classic epiphones branding of the uh, gibson's 57 classics this routing this doesn't have a long neck tenon um you can't see that but you just have to take my word for it or maybe you can no okay um so let's see what the what the readings are Turn the tones up to 10, the volumes up to 10. So we'll do the uh, neck first, rhythm pickup. So the neck pickup, we get a reading of 8.39. 8.39 that's you know that's, that's fairly hot and oh I just realized this this pickup switch like there's a little bit loose that's okay um, when these things have come loose it, it's fairly typical you just tighten it even the jack plate if that comes loose just tighten it you know with your hands or or get um, pliers Try and protect. Um, see, these needle nose pliers have uh, have the teeth, so it can grab this this teeth washer, tooth washer, and you just tighten it a little bit. That's all there is to it. You don't need to take it to a technician or anything like that. Just buy yourself one of those or a small one. I had a Gibson and I sold it to us to somebody, and then I realized uh, when I went back. I noticed um, it wasn't uh, being taken care of when all these things is simple just to make sure those things are tight whenever you pick up your guitar, you know, and then you won't be losing pieces or anything like that. So back to the pickups, where were we? Okay, so to the bridge, the bridge pickup, the Hotch, H-O-T-C-H, we have, yep. I actually never took these readings before. So yeah, I'm seeing this for the first time you are. So these hot ones are 13.44. Much hotter than uh, the Gibson Gibson standard, which are only uh, seven and eight. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, so that's why I, I see uh, these, these, I like these pickups um, in addition to Gibson pickups. I didn't even realize this thing had a little, uh, you can stand up the multimeter like this. On the Gibson review, I was trying to put it, stand it up on a pillow and everything, and just a newbie mistake. But, um, so yeah, I'm going to take this outside and um, polish the frets. What I use is, all I use is, uh, steel wool you know just a fine steel wool you could get the fred erasers from stumac um i've never bought those before i'd like to get them so you'd be a lot faster the reason i take this outside is so you don't get any metal shards or anything in you know in your work workspace or i don't have a vacuum here so um but yeah the, the steel wool does a good good job i'm also going to use the, the lemon oil dunlop 65 once i take the tape off and lightly condition the fretboard this one seems a bit dry 
I, I didn't do any of this to this guitar yet. I've had this guitar for uh, close to a couple months now. And um, I haven't changed the strings. It's a good idea once you buy a used guitar is to always change your strings as soon as you get it because the strings are so, you know, it's just a uh, good hygiene practice to you change your strings. It's nice to have, uh, you know, a few packs on hand to... I used to like the um, the light top heavy bottoms because I started off with Ibanez guitars and I've always tuned down. You know, I'm a bit older now, so I, I, I'm I starting to get into uh, just a lighter gauge string as normal or medium gauge. I actually like the light gauge strings now. Um, I still like metal music and all that, but uh, um, if you look at Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath, Billy Gibbons or ZZ Top, even Jimmy Page, they all used uh, light gauge strings, surprisingly. Um, even as as light as eights, um, nines typically. But I used to use, you know, the tens to the 52, thinking, well, I'm going to get, uh, you know, so much heavy, uh, heavy sound if I use heavy strings. But, you know, you know, that is, that is true to, uh, to a point. If you're down tuning, if you're down tuning to, you know, C sharp or A or whatever, you, you definitely need some heavier geek strings. But there's nothing wrong with the, uh, you know, the lighter gauge strings. So that's that. I'll, uh, once I get this all cleaned up. Um, for you guys that have never done this before, I, I'm just using a regular painter's tape. It's not that sticky. Um, so it doesn't stick to your fretboard. This comes off easily. You know, I wouldn't use duct tape or I wouldn't use, uh, what else is there? Um, mask, uh, scotch tape. I probably wouldn't use that. Um, they do have um, specifically made tape for for this type of work. Um, again, I guess you could go for to Stu Mac where, because when you get to the the smaller frets, you got to rip these darn things in half, and it takes a while. But um, yeah, um, this is has a pretty good a pretty good um, top. It's nice and clean. I recently used this on a different guitar just yesterday, and it does wonders. It brings back guitars amazingly. Um, the condition um, to clean it, to wax it, uh, spray cleaner, and then to protect it. That's all right here. These ones. So I'll probably just since it's not you know totally scratched or anything, I'll probably just use the spray cleaner and give it a quick run through. Put some new strings on, and uh, I'll be back with uh, with the sound sound demo. <laughs> 